a young woman moves into the farmhouse of her dreams and soon finds out she has company. I always thought it was the old man that died there. How much fear can she take? I'm warning you, you're in danger. He's not happy. I was gonna be in my dream home and nothing was gonna stop me from being there. And how far will the entity go? There is something there, something that is not friendly. Before she finally gets the message. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see... Someone's in my room. ...and the things we fear, there are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. In October of 2008, 24-year-old Jennifer Patterson prepares for a housewarming party in her new home. Ah. I knew I'd find you somewhere. It didn't take very long for me to know that this was the house that I wanted. The sale price was pretty attractive, but the charm that the house had was what was hook, line, and sinker. There are still items left in the house that belong to the previous owner. There were a lot of knickknacks and like old Christmas decorations and old encyclopedias left in the basement. Well, that's cute. I could find use for this. <sighs> the house was just adorable. It had wooden beams in the ceiling and it had this this brick on one of the walls and had big open windows and it was just beautiful. I loved it. The house sits on five acres of land on the outskirts of Warsaw. The privacy of the house was really nice. I mean, the neighbor lived on the other side of a line of trees. You can go downtown and you would know everybody. There isn't a stranger in this town. Sarah is Jennifer's best friend. Me and Jen, we've known each other basically our entire lives. She's like my sister. There's no closer family you can get. I was so excited for her when she bought her house. This was really Jen's first step in becoming her own person. Good here. You live out in the middle of nowhere. But did you see the yard and all those huge trees? I love it. Just love it. Yeah, I saw the trees. I'm really glad you're happy. When I first walked into the house, it was one of those feelings that something was kind of off. So the dead flies come with the house? <sighs> Again? There was like 50 dead flies on the floor. They just keep appearing. And in the same spot, too. I don't know where they're coming from. 
Weird. Um, well, let's get a broom and we'll clean them up. Let's get this party started, shall we? Yeah? Excuse me, do I know you? No, you don't. I'm a friend of a friend. From the moment I came into this house, I had a feeling. There's a spirit here, and he wants you out of this house. You and everyone here are not welcome. What are you talking about? There's somebody in here that doesn't want us here? In my house? He told me he is a uh, sensitive and there was a man and a woman in my house. The woman was just a dainty little lady, but the man was very angry. I'm warning you, you're in danger. He's not happy. Hey, Jen. Hey, you look like you've seen a ghost. Jen. Something really weird just happened. There was this creepy guy, and he was talking about how there's a spirit here, and he wants us out, and he just disappeared. What guy? Jen, what's going on with this place? That was when I started getting concerned. It's just one of those things that you can't ignore. Come on, Sarah, don't look at me that way. Hey, just some creepy guy. Probably somebody trying to play a prank on me. I just kind of blew him off. I mean, I didn't believe in that kind of stuff, really. Even if I had believed him, I wasn't going to go anywhere. I was going to be in my dream home, and nothing was going to stop me from being there. But Jennifer's new house is full of surprises. I got this huge, like, whiff of aftershave. And I thought that was kind of weird because there was nothing in the house that would have smelled like that. I looked in the cabinets. I looked even in the hall closet to see if this aftershave was left behind, and nothing. hear her talking. The voices were muffled, like somebody is having a conversation, but I couldn't understand what they were saying. Living by yourself in the middle of nowhere in a new house can be scary hearing any kind of noise.
I kept telling myself, oh, you're tired. You've been working a lot. This is a new house. I just pretty much let it go at that point. Soon after Jennifer's housewarming party, she invites her friend Sarah over for dinner. Oh, come on, Sarah. One more glass. Uh, is it this late already? I've really got to go home. No. <laughs> oh, no. No, no. Uh-uh. You are staying right here. Because there is still some wine left in this bottle, and you are going to help me finish it. I really shouldn't, Jennifer. It's a long way back to my place. Don't be ridiculous. Just stay the night. I've got a guest bedroom. It's all set up and everything. But Sarah thinks the house may be haunted. I chose not to say anything because I didn't want to make a big deal or make something that it wasn't. OK, as long as a ghost don't keep me up. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> Sure enough, Sarah is unable to sleep. Jennifer? Hey, you awake? I went back into the hallway, and I looked at all the doors. All the doors were shut. two separate sounding voices. It was just constant murmuring back and forth, like mumbling. You couldn't make out any specific words. I opened the door and it stopped and there's nobody in the bedroom at all. You just knew there was somebody watching you. The hairs on my arms were like alert. It freaked me out. Sarah warns Jennifer. That was when I started saying, you need to leave. Move out of that place. This place is haunted. 
I didn't really want to sugarcoat it for her because there were things going on. But Jennifer is too stubborn to take heed. One night, Jennifer works late at her job in the shipping department of a local auto parts company. So, here you living in Eli's old house. Shame what happened. Yeah. Did you know him? I don't think there's a man alive who loved his wife more. He was crazy about her. One of my co-workers actually knew the previous owner. According to the co-worker, Eli Jones built the home for his wife, and they spent many happy years there. When she died, Eli was inconsolable. He eventually shut himself away from the world. It pretty much broke his heart when she went. Everything in the house reminded him of her, and he became a hermit. Then, the co-worker says, seven months before Jennifer moved in, Eli also died of natural causes in the house. I'll tell you one thing. That man could dress. He was always clean-shaven and always really loaded up on the aftershave. When I first found out that the previous owners had died in the house, I was really creeped out. But, I mean, there was nothing I could do. Eli, I'm home. I got another big whiff of aftershave. I am um, sorry about your wife. I, I know that you really loved her. Jennifer has learned that the previous owner, Eli Jones, died in her house. You can hear a man say, get out. I'm thinking, what the hell is going on? I could feel the fingers around my leg. I had to tell myself that somebody died in this house. It could possibly be haunted. It's the moment of truth. Despite the fact that she was grabbed, Jennifer decides to make peace with Eli.
He hasn't done anything to hurt me. He scared me, but I just kept telling myself it was him. I figured he loved the house. He loved being there. He built it. He just wants to stay. I wasn't OK with it, but what was I going to do? It's not like you can just pick up and leave a house. You can't just do that. I just told myself, this is my house. I'm just going to have to ignore it. In 2011, Jennifer meets Sean Williams, a maintenance manager at work. It all started out with a friendship, and then it ended up evolving into more. I feel very lucky that I met her. When the relationship grows serious, Jennifer invites him to live with her. Are you sure you're all right with this? Me moving in? Yes, of course. Sean has the biggest heart of anyone that I know. He would give you the shirt off his back. He could have a million things going on, and he would drop everything for me. I was super excited when Sean moved in with Jen, thinking that, well, maybe a male presence will help calm things down. Hey, are, are you sure that you're OK with all this? I mean, a crazy house and all the residual whatevers. <laughs> I'm not the least bit worried about that. I'm usually a man of science, and sometimes I thought well, what she was viewing wasn't exactly what really was happening. Misinterpretation. I think that his way of thinking was, I, I believe that something is happening to you, but I got to be able to debunk it somehow. I was coming home late from work, and the front of the house has a big picture window, and there's somebody standing there. About this time, every time I we would go to bed, I would lock the bedroom door. Something, someone not being able to open my door freely was comforting. I'm trying to look into the darkness. And after my eyes had adjusted, I saw somebody standing there. For some time, Jennifer Patterson's haunted home has been quiet. But when her boyfriend, Sean, moves in, the ghost suddenly reappears.
I could not speak. I couldn't even move a muscle to wake Sean up. There was nothing that I could do. In my head, I'm screaming, what the hell is that? Sean, please. Sean, help me. Help me. What's wrong? Jennifer looked over at me, and all the blood was drained from her face. What is it? It's here. I didn't see anything. There was nothing around. You don't believe me, but I know what I saw, and it was him. Sean's reaction to what I had just seen was nothing happened. Your eyes were playing tricks on you. I knew what I saw. I still know what I saw. And there was nothing that he could say or do to make me change my mind. I saw somebody standing there. I saw him. He was standing right there. Are you sure it wasn't just a bad dream? You don't believe me, but I know what I saw, and it was him. She was definitely freaked out, but I'm trying to understand what's going on. Someone's seeing things, but you're not seeing them, so you don't know really what she can do to help. It's definitely frustrating. Days pass without incidents. But Jennifer grows increasingly anxious when she is in the house alone. You're always on the edge of your seat, waiting for something to happen, waiting for something to scare you. I mean, you're supposed to be comfortable in your house. It literally sounded like something heavy fell or something slammed hard, like someone was breaking a door down. And that's the one I grabbed my 45. Someone's in the house. Stay here. Lock the door behind me. Don't move anymore until I get back. I looked around the room. I didn't see anything that could create the loud bang. you paranoid. Look at her ghost.
my heart was racing. There was something there, something that is not friendly. <laughs> When his girlfriend Jennifer grows fearful, Sean goes searching for ghosts in their home. I started off as a skeptic. Every time she was telling me something, when I looked around, I didn't see anything. When I went down into the basement, I sensed that something was definitely bad. It was a very intense feeling. Sean can no longer deny that the house is haunted. That was the first time that I believed that something paranormal was going on in this house. Knowing that Sean finally realized that what I was talking about was actually true, it was a big relief to me. But then again, he's seeing it, so I'm not crazy. And what do we do? Jennifer and Sean decide they need help. She ended up doing some research and found a place locally that could get to the bottom of what was going on. I was hoping there was some way that this, these people would tell me that I could stay in my house, that they could get rid of whatever was in it. In July 2013, the Fort Wayne Shadow Chasers Parasisters arrive at the farmhouse. We're an all-female team that um, investigates supernatural occurrences. Hi, I'm Tina, and this is Jackie, part of my team. Thank you so much for coming. My boyfriend is at work, otherwise he'd be here too, so. Jennifer was very nervous, shaken up. She didn't want to be in the home alone at all, so she was waiting outside for us. So I understand that you had sensed a spirit in the house. Yeah. And your boyfriend as well? Yeah, we, uh, we've both had experiences. And you were grabbed, is that right? In the basement. Something grabbed my ankle. Sean said that he felt a presence down there too. Well, then I think that we should start the investigation down there. I'll catch up with you all later. There's something here. I want to do some digging. We are at the home of Jennifer Patterson, Warsaw, Indiana. That night, Cheryl, the team sensitive, has a vision of the previous owner who lived in the house. Sometimes I get pictures of people who have been there in the past. Well, this music reminds me of the day we were married. You look absolutely beautiful tonight. Oh, thank you, Eli. It's so nice. Sometimes I get feelings of maybe how the person has passed away. If they are anxious or sad, 
it gives us an overall picture of what might have been there. Cheryl confirms what Jennifer's co-worker told her. After his wife's death, Eli was heartbroken and became a recluse. Later, he died of natural causes in the house alone. The previous owner was very ill. He had some sort of a cancer, and it had something to do with his chest. and dizzy, and I also felt like I was having a hard time breathing. My chest felt like there was a weight pressing on it. For more A Haunting, visit DestinationAmerica.com. paranormal investigator has a vision of the man haunting Jennifer and Sean's house. He did not want us there. We were invading his place, his sanctuary. I could almost see him standing back there. It was more like a shadow, but it was him. Cheryl, are you okay? died here. This is his house. He'll never leave. The previous owner put his sweat and his love into the house. He built the house for his wife. And when he died, he still did not want to leave. He is a soul attached to the house. Jennifer. He's still grieving. He lost his wife, the love of his life. He considers you the intruder. The new people that moved in were outsiders. They didn't belong, and he wanted them out. I always thought it was the old man that died there. It's still his house to him. Is there anything that I can do to stay in my home? There's one option, but it's not something that everyone is able to do. At this point, I am willing to try anything. Well, then you're gonna have to try to live in this house together. <sighs> it's possible that if it's not too frightening that they may be able to coexist. That's something that definitely could work for a lot of people. But you can't be afraid. That's the only way that this is going to work. If Jennifer didn't get her fear under control, then he could possibly feed off of that and things could get worse for her. Before the investigators leave, they recite a protection prayer. It sets boundaries for our homeowner and the spirits. It protects the homeowner. And we hope that the protection prayer will at least calm down activity. In the days that follow, Jennifer attempts to live with the grieving ghost of Eli, but her fear is ever-present. There's nothing to be afraid of, Jennifer. Nothing. 
just doing the laundry. <sighs> I felt two hands on my back push me. The physical attack leaves Jennifer in a state of shock, and she and Sean move out. I got a lot of injuries from that fall. Bruised ribs, pulled muscle. I had strained things in my shoulder. That was the scariest thing that has ever happened in my life. I can't even explain how terrifying it is and to think that if it can push me, what else can it do to harm us? We packed our stuff and left. Never looked back. To this day, Jennifer still has mixed feelings about her home. With everything that happened, it was still painful to let the house go because I did love the house. It's almost like a trauma. It always, it's always there. No matter how much you try to ignore it or forget, it's always there. It is definitely a horrifying experience. I would say if you don't believe in the paranormal, you definitely need to kind of be more aware of your surroundings because not everything can be proven from a book. Eventually, the farmhouse sells. The house is on the market probably six months, and a couple from out of state Bought it. I don't want to know if they have experiences or not. I don't care to know anything about that house anymore. <laughs>